Hello, welcome to Conscious TV. My name is Ian McNay, and today we have another program in our series about homeopathy, and this time it's about homeopathy and transformation. And uh, the guest in the studio today is Adam Matanda. Hi, Adam. Thank you for coming in. And we're going to, I think, start with your, because you had quite a strong spiritual side, didn't you, from the early days? And uh, yes. you, to start with, when you were a teenager, you were very interested in Christian teachings. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I was very. I was very moved by Jesus' teaching, of the Sermon on the Mount in particular. And then you, at some point, got into studying Gurdjieff, and I think I, belonged to a Gurdjieff group. I did. I, I started my, with Gurdjieff by reading, by reading some of his writings. And whilst they are incredibly difficult to read, I am kind of persistent, and I stuck at it for many, many years. I, and you know, I, occasionally I still dip into um, Beelzebub's Tales, his his opus magnus, and uh, and his magnus opus, I should say, which is unbelievably difficult. Well, I think he said afterwards the reason he wrote that book was because he wanted to see who his real his real kind of seekers were, because there are great words of wisdom, but most of it is nonsense. That is. That is exactly what it's like, yes. Uh, uh, and you have to persist to get some some juice out of it. But what that did for me was it it, it kind of took me to, to look for a place I could go where I would get something direct. And I found myself eventually at Daglingworth Manor, which was uh, an establishment in Gloucestershire, which had been set up by J.G. Bennett, who was a direct student of Gurdjieff. That's right, yes. By which time he'd, he'd died, but he'd passed on the leadership of the group to Anthony Blake, um, who was one of his protégés. And I, I, I went to seminars and weekend workshops there. And what do you feel you got out of it at the time? I, I met some wonderful people. I mean, that, some really wonderful, amazing people. That was one thing I got out of it, and I made some really good friends there. And I attended Gurdjieff movement classes as a, an absolute raw beginner. Right. And I watched two men, Anthony Blake and another man whose name I've forgotten, perform The Warrior dance, as it, I think it's called, and I could not believe my eyes. The, the awareness, the concentration, the consciousness of where their body parts were and all these astonishing movements that have to be done to music in an absolutely precise sequence, I couldn't believe my eyes. And then we had to get up and do it. I did this once, uh, beginner's class, I know how hard it is, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, and the other thing that was, that was enormously powerful was Zika. This um, meditation, really, sitting in a circle chanting. Um, all the men. That went on for hours, like four or five hours. Mm. In an attic, freezing cold, wrapped in blankets. Um, Deeply moving. That's all I can say, really, about that. And then I think you went on to live in a community in Gloucestershire. Uh, no, not in Gloucestershire, in Cheshire. Cheshire, OK. Yeah, in Cheshire, where, where I came from originally. Right. And uh, So something was drawing you to, like, a fairly unconventional life, uh, wasn't well, it? Well... In a sense, it was that very thing that that changed my life round because I heard about the beginnings of Findhorn. You, you know that place Findhorn in Scotland? Scotland yeah. yeah. And um, I wrote to them. I was married, by the way, at the time. I had a couple of children. And I wrote to Findhorn and, and I explained my process and where I'd come from and so on and asked... And also, I listed my skills, which were mainly from the printing industry and graphic design. And I, I asked, could I go 
could I go and see them, stay there, da 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 da. And they, they said yes, essentially, and then I talked with my wife about it, and she wasn't going to have any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't let it go. I, I, I knew I wanted to find another way of living. Um, by then, I was a lecturer in an art college, and, uh, I, and, I, and I loved it. I absolutely adored it. But... I didn't want to continue with that for the rest of my life. And that ultimately led to the breakdown of that marriage. Right, yeah. And then I found myself contacting some people who lived in a community on narrowboats on the canal at, uh, in Cheshire. And that's where I went. I went and joined them. And... Um, we had, I was there for, I don't know how long, two or three years anyway. And in, in that situation, we, we had a theatre, a live theatre company, we did um, performing arts, had a puppet theatre, and a lot of fun. And um, I, I loved it there. Some of the people came and went from time to time. Two of the people that I became very close to moved to Wales and set up a small establishment there. And when I got ill, my first thought was to go there. So you got ill, you had, had an influenza, you thought to start I thought with. I had flu. Yeah. I was living on the boat, it was bitter winter cold. Um, and, I, I, and I felt, well, I've got to go, f I've got to go and find some help, basically. A lot of people had moved away from the for the canal for the for the Christmas period, essentially, Christmas New Year period. So I was there not alone, but more or less alone. I, I'd stopped lecturing by this time. And I drove to Wales to these people. More or less collapsed in their caravan. <laughs> they put me to bed. They sent for a local man who was a friend, a healer, uh, and herbalist, and he came to see me the next morning and he said, I can't do anything for him, get into hospital. So they took me to hospital and I was in hospital for just over three weeks on intensive care and it was glandular fever. We homeopaths call it mononucleosis. I came out of there I was sort of stumbling around trying to do things in the garden and helping with the market stall we had, but I had no energy at all. I was, I'd was i lost about two and a half stone. And Mary said, Mary was the woman that lived with there, and she said, look, I think you better go and see Julian. Julian is a friend of mine, he's a homeopath, and he really helped me, so I think he could help you. Go and see Julian. And she fixed up for me to go which I did. Friday afternoon, on the day before Midsummer's Day. I think you told me earlier you didn't actually know what homeopathy was at the time. I didn't know what a homeopath was, what homeopathy was. So you had no idea what you were going into. I had no idea. Yeah. I arrived in this cottage, we sat in a little room, he said to me, tell me your story. That was it. That's all he said, really. So I told him my story, starting with my Starting with my birth, actually, because I was very premature. I weighed two pounds. I didn't know it until I was turned 40. I was a survivor of twins. And I told him all this. I didn't know what he wanted to know, you see. Yeah. 